Hello everyone and welcome to round two, sub round one, I don't know how you would call it Richard, of uh, the Hidden Chalice 2021. We've got today the yeah. lineup of Maurice de Saxe versus Mustafa Kemal, uh, promises to be a cracker, both entertaining first rounds. Um, I think going into this, Kamal, the favoured player, Richard, what do you think? And welcome to the stream. Yeah, happy to be here, Guy. And I, I would agree. Um, so Zach Frenet has predicted this one for 2-1 to Maurice de Saxe. But I would agree with you that Mustafa Kamal gave what I thought was the best showing um, in uh, round one. Certainly, I thought that he absolutely destroyed uh, Geronimo in that game with some really innovative uh, strategy. So I'm really excited to see what he's got to offer on this map which is very different to, I think, the sets that we've seen so far. Yucatan tends to be a fast castle map. We've got Lithuanians against Ethiopians, two very different civs with two very different strategies. Excited to see it. Excellent. And I think we're just waiting for the uh, the crew to, to join us. Currently, we're on two viewers. Hello, Phil. Welcome to the stream. Um, but are we expecting any shenanigans here or do you think well I, I think guy we, we've we've got some shenanigans uh already uh, what a surprise two militia are actually heading towards blues base oh, from Richard, Richard, we hands. haven't actually started the video yet we are currently what? on the waiting screen uh well dude the i asked for the three two one go oh, I, I thought, thought you, you meant, meant the game the, i thought you meant well uh you know what just pause it there and um we will get going now no 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 i'll reload the game i'll reload the game <laughs> That's a nice Shit. professional operation. <laughs> Apologies, we were waiting for our viewers. We now have Rue in the chat. We have Philippe in the chat. Let's have some Fs for Hops' commentary career. <laughs> right, and re-pause again on four seconds. Excellent. Okay, in which case, shall we get going? And uh, Richard, are you expecting any shenanigans from this game? Well, the Lithuanian civilization, which is being played by Maurice de Saxe, has a lot of options available to it. Oh my god, we've one got of which a barrack a, straight up. Which, one of which is called the Insta Drush, and you can see the two villagers laying down the barracks now. This is a very awkward build, um, because essentially what needs to happen is the villagers need to go to straggler trees in order to get enough wood for the lumber camp. Yeah, um, it can be very difficult. His rally point already on the trees. So it's one that can be very difficult to manage. Uh, you'll either stop creating villages because you get housed or because you run out of food or whatever um, but essentially you spend normally 180 of your food although I think that Maurice Sachs because he hasn't sent a bill to collect 10 gold is only going to do the two militia which is a safer variant of this insta drush build and he's going to send those two militia forward and I, I can tell you right now there is no way that uh Mustafa Kamal is going to expect this. I think that he is going to be very shocked. Yeah, we've got some turkey scouting in here. Very, very good uh, kind of exploration compared to Maurice de Saxe. I guess a bit of a double-edged sword here, and let's follow the militia Bonjour. playing Yucatan with um, within Lithuanian Instadrush. Because on the one hand, you've got so many food sources, you don't need as much micro. But on the other hand, presumably, there's much, much more room for... Uh, your opponent to uh, slip up a bit, have some idle time and still emerge unscathed, yeah. I would imagine. You, you know what, Guy? I really like it. And the reason why I really like it is because Lithuanian civilization, their main benefit is they get loads of food really early. And that is negated on Yucatan because there is so much food that everyone has loads of food really early. And it's also a map that's easy to wall. So your standard Lithuanian opening of scouts, very difficult to pull off. What the Lithuanian Insta Drush is going to be allow um, Maurice de Saxe to do is get onto this wood line, hopefully from um, from Mustafa Kamal, and do a bit of early damage before Mustafa Kamal has a chance to wall up. Yeah, well, now we see the militia not really finding anything initially, but now coming in and beginning to make contact. And right now we've got Mustafa Kamal still unloomed. Not surprising; he's probably expecting some kind of fast castle build. And so this feels like it could be deadly. Yeah, absolutely. We've also got some turkey uh, rustling going on in the bottom. Now the I'm issue that Maurice de Saxe has is he hasn't spotted the blue wood line. Yeah. I think if he knew where blue was collecting wood, he would be doing damage. And really, that's a failure of scouting on his part because he's been all around in the area. He might be waiting for the village to come out and build the mill 
Is he going to notice that uh, uh, they just, just passing? He's getting unlucky here, isn't he? And the problem, I guess, is just looking at home very briefly. Economy in chaos, only just getting a lumber camp up. And you know, I've, yeah, I've personally tried this build a couple of times. I know um, oh. Zach Frenet has also experimented. Um, he's yeah. currently going straight past the villager, but he seems to have found him now. And the real problem is... Yeah, but that is... village is going to get back yeah. home pretty easily. And I think that this insta-drush is becoming a little bit of a wet easy. blanket at the moment. And what it indicates to me, potentially, is someone who doesn't have all that much experience with this build. That This mm. would, for instance, tell me that I, I don't think it's you. Um, be because I think that you... move commenting my own match, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. I, but, I mean, it's an interesting one because... Here, there aren't too many players in this tournament that I think would try this, um, and oh, so I think that the, the fact line. that he's, he's tried it line. not very successfully tells us something about the players. Oh, very I, bold of Blue, having seen the Instagram not loomed. to get Loom as yeah. well. Yeah, and he's had to oh. delete a lumber cat. Oh, that is absolutely so terrible. So already this has now done a hundred woods worth Scout of damage. Scout goes down though. Scout goes down. Yeah. I think it's worth it though, like you say, already had to delete a lumber camp. This village is idle all over the place. But I mean, if you compare the economies actually, uh, blue has 18 villagers to red 16. And this, you know, as we've said all along, this is the problem with the yeah. Lithuanian Instadrush. You get housed, you run out of food. It's very difficult to sustain constant villager production Although as we, you need to do We have one Dark villager Age. pick. We have two villager picks. And Maurice de Sachs taking the villa lead now. Yeah, and that that's that's good work from Maurice de Sachs. And, you know, if nothing else, this is going to absolutely tilt Mustafa Kamal. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't know who he's coming up against. Obviously, this is a, a hidden identities tournament. He must be fearing the worst, like fearing one of the, you know, the real top players in this tournament right now. Of course. Now, we've got both players. Uh, oh, sorry. We've got uh, one of them housed. We've got three turkeys still in the corner being rustled away. You'd love to see it. And a rich... Do you? And I think that because Maurice de Saxe has lost his scout, he could probably put those turkeys to a little bit better use. If you have a look at his fog of war, he sees basically nothing. And crucially, he doesn't see where he can wall his we've base on the right-hand side. We've got another misplay from Maurice de Saxe here, though. He's uh, building a barracks, clearly just part of his normal build, and forgotten that he's already built one. Oh dear! Oh, that's tragic. Well, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's double men at arms. <laughs> Feels like a bit of an awful. He's one. not I'm saying that as a connoisseur of men at arms. I think that is, that is. He's, that's a mistake. Yeah, uh, yeah it's yeah. a mistake. He knows that he needs to build one. He was probably floating a bit of wood. Uh, we've got the turkeys on the move. Will they make it back? We've got Maurice de Sack steadily balling up on the left-hand side. Maybe shutting out that precious cargo. We will see. And we've got we've got blue. Blue is not taking any chances now. Mustafa Kamal has had enough hijinks. He's going for a full wall here, uh, and he's team? still in Dark Age. So I think that he his plan was Fast Castle. He's not deviated from that plan. A really interesting that um, Maurice de Saxe has decided to go for Drush into Fast Feudal here. Um, and I say that because normally the follow up from a Drush is a Fast Castle. And, you know, normally on a very wallable map like Yucatan is, you would follow up with a fast castle. Yeah. Have you seen Blue trying to take that boar yeah, in the middle guy? Yeah, I don't I think that's going to go well. I don't know well. if he's going to lose another Ville here. I don't think he even has Loom. This is uh, a very probable disaster. No, he's got Loom now. He's got Loom, but the Ville is... Uh... The Ville's not making it back. He needs to do the house trick. But, but I mean, yeah, you say, you say this, but we're talking about this as well, right? I'd say Maurice de Sachs, fairly successful Lith Drush there, all in all. And he's still got no villager advantage, despite getting two picks and blue losing one to the boar. And that's just because of that micro at your base. So, so hard to manage. But he's in feudal. He's got... And he's putting down a stable straight away. I like this player, I must say, Richard. He thinks he's got the yeah. advantage. He's going to try and push it before the walls go up. Yeah, and the, the the scouting's really hurt him though. You can see that those scouts could easily come out of the stable and be trapped. Mm -hmm. Be interesting to see if you can run along the side of that pond, but if you can't, he could easily trap himself in there um, with the positioning of that stable. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll see. And of course, I mean, we've got Maurice de Sachs there fractionally earlier, but I think Mustafa Kamal, good job to catch up there. Um, Two-ville lead from Maurice de Sachs at the minute. 
you'd feel that yeah. it's his game at the minute, but hard to tell. And the real question here is, I'm looking at the, the west side on the left of Kamal's base. We've got a race against time to get these palisades up. Yeah, yeah before the scouts come out. To get the scouts out. Now, you probably want two before you're pushing. Uh, I think Maurice's Whoa. next one's about to come out. And I think you know, Kamal seems to be aware of this. I don't know if he's just, just panicking or if he's just being very, very cautious. But he's hammered a lot of these in the way you do when things are about to come. But Maurice de Sachs waiting for three, and that feels like it could be a mistake. Also, quite a lot of idle time, I don't know if you've noticed. Maintaining the two-ville lead. I've got three scouts out, no bloodlines. Yeah, I don't think that we will see bloodlines. No. Uh, the 100 gold cost normally means that you don't get it until you're on the way to Castle Age. More like the sea scale barding armor when the blacksmith comes up. The interesting thing, I think, for me in terms of Mustafa Kamal's build, it's a real halfway house. It started off looking like a fast castle, but it's not ended up being that way. And I think he's going to really struggle to get out military that can do damage. Um, and he's going to need spears because these scouts are getting in now on the right hand side. Oh, yes, so yeah. your question is answered here. We've got two idle vills here. Let's see how Blue's going to respond to it. Yep, so he's about to lose another. But I mean, again, we said this, we're currently looking at it, at Maurice de Sachs not producing any villagers. Great quick walling here, I'm seeing. There's a small gap. Is he going to get through? No, great timing, great reflexes. But yeah, I'm counting maybe 30, 40 seconds of TC idle time there, because Maurice de Sachs is idling the scouts around. I, I, I'm trying to think of players in this tournament that I know struggle to build villages, and there's what there's one player who I think is this good with his forward micro, but also struggles to build villages that springs to mind. And, and ob obviously we know him well. It? Obviously we know him well, and you know we'll talk a lot with him about um, th strategies like the instant rush. And I just wonder if he'd thought, oh, hidden. Chalice might be a good place to try this out and pretend to be the great Absolutely. guy, Miss Campbell. Well, if so, I mean, he's got archers coming out now. Obviously, Ethiopians, they're great strength, and that feels like um, Mustafa Kamala's route back into the game. I mean, I would tend to agree that's that's not a bad shout. Um, I guess the one thing I would say with the Lith Insta Drush, and there's lots of these strategies. I mean, obviously, we saw a bit of an elephant rush on a, one of the earlier games. I can't remember from who, as we get another village villager pick. Um, down and south. You know, there are certain strategies that I think you can kind of practice. Um, and, you know, you only need to try it once or twice, get the build down, and you could very easily tilt someone. And so maybe that's just what's happened. I think both players struggling here to, to micro. Yeah, um, Spears came in there and the scouts spears, were on the stand ground. Well, and, yeah. I mean, obviously, you do want to do to stand ground if you're trying to micro villagers down, stopping the redirect. Basically, but yeah. I get the impression Maurice de Sachs, he noticed all. these archers. And both players here, right, they're trying to play defensively and offensively at the same time. And we can just see see them waiting. This feels like the end of the scouts. Um, but again, we've got Maurice de Sachs not building any villagers. Right now, he's got a four vil advantage. He's got 700 food in the bank, but he's... He does have archers in his base though, Guy, yeah. and not very much to defend against it. He didn't do this very standard skirm switch that we would normally see from Lithuanians, especially against Ethiopians. I really think that he's missed a trick there. I mean, Lithuanians, they get faster skirmishes. Uh, you know Ethiopians are going archers. He probably saw the range. Um, he certainly had the wood for it. Yeah. Um, We've got I'm not sure why we going see up that to just skirm defend switch. that back resource. But it feels like we're about to... I mean, the tower will do the job. There aren't enough uh, archers forward for Blue to do anything here. Well, he might... Uh, I think he's, just... he's just cut the villager advantage down to one. Probably zero at this point. I think he's doing the right thing to fight under the tower here. Yeah. Just need to stop those archers from idling Eureka. He could do a better job of microing away the weak vills and hopping them back into the tower, but... Yeah. I mean, ultimately, it was a decent defense. And he's going to be in Castle Age ever so slightly quicker um, than Mustafa Kamal. You feel that's a wasted opportunity, though. With the start of this game, we're now seeing a position where Mustafa Kamal got one uh, two-vil advantage. 
And if I'm looking at their resources, Mustafa Kamal here, you know, enough food to go straight into three T, uh, sorry, enough wood to go straight into three TCs if he wants, or to get a huge amount of archers out quite quickly. Yeah, and I think that he would opt for the latter guy. I mean, with four villagers on wood, you're not going to be a four. Sorry, four villagers on food, you're not going to be able to sustain villager production from more than one town center. So I suspect we might see university, we might see ballistics, and then we will see a lot of crossbowmen. I imagine will yeah, be the order of the day. I think that's right. Whereas it looks like Maurice de Saxe is going for more uh, cavalry here. We've got bloodlines coming out. We seem to have some mind games in the chat. Um, we've got an 11 with Castle Age. Presumably, Kamal is trying to pretend that he's a million miles away and GG is imminent. That would be my guess. <laughs> yep, here we go. I'm so dead. Of course, this man is at 90% Castle Age at the minute. He's got quite a few archers on the boil, as our friend Kev would say. I mean, it's hard to say what... I don't know, what do you fancy here at the minute, Richard? We've got a very narrow entrance to to one player's base. We've um, got very good walls, I think, now. You know, um, Kamal has learned his lesson. we got, no, third TC going up here. Yeah, I, I, I still favour Maurice de Sachs. And I favoured Maurice de Sachs as soon as Mustafa Kamal placed that second TC. I understand the instinct to protect the gold, and then the instinct to build one on the stone, but he doesn't have food. What? What's? How is he going to produce villagers? I think that we'll see a knight all in from Reese to Saxon. That should probably win the game. Uh, with the archers coming out, it feels. I mean, we can see the knights here, and I think Maurice de Sax is suffering from not having a third stable here. He could even use a market, although no, he doesn't have a market. Um, but I think we can see a play around the back here. I mean, the one thing is, is that a fourth TC coming up? A fourth TC coming up. So clearly, Mustafa Kamal is just going for a pure boom here and presumably is hoping to buy just enough time. I remember watching Mustafa Kamal in the first game and um, the way that he picked Orange and then picked Malians on Nomad was very Sean McGarry-esque. And four TCs when you go behind, I think is a very Sean McGarry thing to do. Just, you know, rely on your strength, which is building lots of villages, and hope, hope that you can ride it out. You uh, know what, though? I think it might... And that's yeah, exactly I'm, what I'm looking here, we've got crossbows coming into the base, no home military. And the amount of town centres is going to make it very, very hard for Maurice de Sachs to raid here. Yeah, and Maurice de Sachs, oh dear. Oh no. The Maurice de Sachs, yeah, I, I guess we just didn't realise how bare bones that eco was and oh, these crossbows are going to kill everything. Yeah, that's, that's bad. Yeah, this is huge. I mean, you know what this feels like, Richard? This is, and I don't necessarily think it's a complete misplay from Maurice de Sachs, but you've got the upper hand, you go for a 1TC all in. And, you know, if Mustafa Kamal hadn't been stockpiling, you know, 200... 75 wood times three whatever that number is you'd be in a position where you'd be wiping up most of the eco right now and it would be into a gg but instead actually he's been rewarded for this kind of defensive setup he's got yeah, yeah. Looking at 40 c's and, and this just... is like the modus operando in yucatan isn't it um it's so easy to wall so easy to boom um, and like, oh, the whole, look at the whole of Maurice de Saxe's eco is idle. He can't even engage with these knights because there are two pikes in front of the crossbows. Oh, I think, and critically, what I'm oh, saying. Oh, actually, actually, he will engage now. There are like 12 knights. What yeah. I, what but I'm saying Blue's here. Blue's going to sit in a choke point and be annoying. What I'm seeing here, though, Richard, though, is Maurice de Saxe, he's got no wood. And so he's just falling behind this boom that is coming out. We can see Mustafa Kamala throwing down more food. Um, he's, he's panicked as well. Like he's had all of these villages in the town centre for ages. Yeah. Uh, they're not the you know farms aren't being threatened. Well, I can see. I do like. I do like this, which is just he's quick walling them into the corner and he's ignoring them. Which. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the villager difference here now. Yeah, twenty-ish villagers. We've got the knights completely idled, even while he's pumping out enough to go up there. And you know. He's got close to 20 knights. He could go and take down one or more of these TCs and cause some real damage, but he's just and so reluctant K to. Kamal has 15 more. 
crossbows in his ranges at home. Yeah. Um, so uh, feels, there will be a second wave. Like GG, we're not there yet, but yeah, I'm looking across this map. Because um, yeah, if you're Maurice to Sax, you're hoping that this group in the corner are just contained, and that's most of the military. And you're now hoping to go for a, a raid to really level things. Whereas instead, and I, yeah. Maurice to Sax has to realise that he's all in here. He can't. He can't go to two TCs. He can't try and recatch the Ville lead. He's got to be like, right, I've got 17 knights. I've got to do as much damage as I can. Yeah. Like I, you, he's missing you know, the next armor upgrade, which is really problematic for the TCs that Blue has. Not even They've enough. Been... Not even enough wood to get a monastery. Pick up a few of these relics to I make his knights was. more dangerous. And also, these. I'm looking around. If there's one thing Mustafa Kamal's base is very well made for, it's defending against night raids. Look at these multiple layers upon layers of walls. Yeah. We got the knights coming in finally. They'll get, you know, one pick, two pick. I think, I think, you know, De Sax is playing the right strategy here, which is trying to kill as many vills as possible. He can't know that he's 20 ish vills behind. He must think maybe it's 10. If I can just even it up, I can get back in the game. Yeah, it's tough though, because yeah. um, Kamal's just keeping his crossbows in his base. That's enough crossbows that um, Maurice yeah. Sachs is going to really struggle to engage. I think looking back on this game, right, Maurice Sachs really has to ask himself, okay, my Drush did loads of good work idling. Was following up with scouts really the right answer? Or should I have used the additional time that that bought me to get a sneaky fast castle in and get these knights here earlier? Yeah. I think it's hard though. I mean, the scouts got a few picks, didn't they? And yeah, Desax, I don't even think he's noticing. I... He's not really microing these, he's trying to get a pick, but it's not worth it. And we can see forward siege coming up, pikes to defend against the knights. I mean, to Sax we are seeing finally with some archery rangers, and finally a second TC? Yeah, second TC on this wood line, which I don't hate. I mean, you've got to be thinking though, I don't know what he sees, let's see. Yeah, see, again, his scouting is killing him, because if you're Maurice de Sachs right now, and if you know that there is, on this left, a relic, some gold, some stone, you send half your economy out there, right? And you say, you know what, we can play base trade. I want to try and stay in it. But instead, he's here, he's trying to get elite skirmisher, he's got 26 wood, he's got no market. I think he, go, yeah. he went all in too early. Um... Yeah, th th this is this is over now that um, Blue has successfully defended from the all-in raid. Um, I think there are some things which Blue could be doing better though. So if you notice, he has nine crossbows queued up and three mangonels, but he doesn't yet have a university in ballistics, which is a really important upgrade for the co comp he's going. Oh no, he does have a university, oh. sorry, but he doesn't yet have ballistics. Yeah. He could easily research it by um, cancelling some of those crossbows there. Yeah, and I mean, this is this is a hard one, because I think you are right. Um, Maurice de Sachs, I mean, and he's trying to just snipe these and buy some time, I think. He's just thinking if I can hold them here, maybe rush, I don't know, a tower up or something. Mass enough skirms, maybe I can stay in this, but with a 4TC boom. That being said, we've got the knights coming in. And again, you're, you're hoping here, and you do love when you see it, if someone's so focused on the aggressive. Uh, but no, we see Kamal Lotuses, Kamal Garrison's all the TCs, there's no picks. I mean, it is it is a really hard one here, Richard, because I think you're right. You know, if you're Maurice de Sachs, you want to be going... This, the scouts are a bit of a difficult one, right? If he picks off two or three more villagers, and if his yeah. macro hadn't been so bad, we could have been looking at a fairly quick GG, you'd imagine. Yeah. But I think the point is he gambled, and it's the gold. nature of all in. Yeah. I think we might see the GG coming relatively shortly. Yeah, you'd imagine so. But still no ballistics for Mustafa Kamal. This is really annoying me. Like, look at him trying to shoot these villagers and missing all the time. Um, I mean, they go down eventually, but it will hurt him against... Um, Stronger opponents, yeah. the late ballistics. Well, and you get the impression here that um, I 
think he's very, very well played from Kamala, but he's definitely... You get the impression he's stuck to familiarity. Now, I don't I don't know exactly who or where this comes from. Yeah, this could be Sean, you mentioned. Um, so, be... the, there was an accusation oh. in the chat, which I thought was interesting, that it was Will. Um, mm. Will very commonly in games pretends that he's losing in the chat and then shows up in your base like, surprise, I've got loads of military. Um, this very Will thing to do. Uh, and Maurice de Sachs is evidently someone who is aware of this little meme because he said hi Gibby uh, when this happened. Mm. So I, I think that we're probably seeing a match between two Canadians. I'm not sure if Blue is Will, um, but yeah. I, I could see this easily as like, I don't know, Luke in the red and will in the blue maybe something like that yeah it's um it's interesting we got Maurice de Sachs finally realizing he needs a market desperately I mean it's it's it feels over at the point Maurice de Sachs just doesn't have enough knights they don't have the armor to even stay and consistently raid 36 vil difference we do see a town center in the left which I quite yeah, like that's I was about to point that out that's the only positive uh, again, for red is that he's following your advice guys he's so missed to do the a gold. Bit of base trade he's missed the gold he's missed the stone it's too late for a base trade as well you know I'm um, I'm a player who loves a good base trade some of you remember uh, Miss Campbell Invitational actually uh, Gibby Miss Campbell um, there was a a, base, a full on base trade which lasted for about 2 hours um, but, you know, if you're going to accept that, you need to have gone 10 minutes ago. And you need to have honestly put a castle up or something. You just need something to hold while you populate here, 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 and here. <laughs> Are you yeah. seeing the chat? Uh, yeah, I'm assuming that doesn't affect us, right? This is a local, locally cast game. Oh, is that no? Oh, that's a genuine announcement. I thought that Maurice de Sachs was trying to be like, <laughs> oh, it was a technical issue. I can't continue with the series. <laughs> oh, we've got a monk. Maybe this could be clutch. Let's see. Here he goes. Nope. What, nope. What, what a machine gunning. Useless. I mean, at, at this point, um, I mean, uh, yeah, I know the game is over, but really, Blue should be thinking about Imperial Age, not Shota Warriors. <laughs> I guess Blue's just decided that he's going to win this in Castle Age. Um, but he is finally getting Ballistics, which is cool. Uh, happy with that. Cutting off the other side. I mean, Ooh, there's a castle! Maurice de Sachs is this castle going, going to be castle? denied? Uh, I mean, what does uh, yeah, it protect some gold, I guess? Are the mangonels going to spot it? I guess if you're Maurice de Sachs, you're thinking, if I can sucker this person into another five minutes of trying to clean up a castle uh, and whatever. Uh, no, the crossbows have found it, and they do oh, have yeah. ballistics now, so this is going to be absolutely brutal. Yeah, GG. Yeah, we see the GG called. And you know what, Richard? I would say that was an excellent game. I really enjoyed that game. Really enjoyed um, that. We're just gonna... I can't wait to cast, um, yeah, game. Yeah, um, so let's just really do good. a little bit of um, post-mortem, just see how chat is. Chat, did we enjoy that? Can we get some hype? We've got some predictions here. We've got, is this guy, guy casting guy? Very meta. It would be awesome if this match was Hops versus Guy. I mean, it's possible, Hops, I guess. Um, yeah. Derek is loving this. I love that. Yeah. Double racks. I think that was a mistake. Um... Not Sean confirmed because not orange. I mean, again, pretty pretty big um, kind of people psyching out. Sean would not call Will Gibby. That's interesting, unless he's pretending to be Hops. Oh yeah, um, yeah, that, yeah. That 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 is actually a really good point. Um, Turkeys who, are still in the far left corner. No, they're not. I think they came back. Um. Castle Diversion, Hype missed out of it. Fun one. It was indeed a fun one, Sean. Uh, so, Richard, going into game two, um, I guess first, player predictions and second, predictions for game two. Do you think we're going to see a 2 0 sweep or uh, to a decider for the first time in this competition? I think that Mustafa Kamal is going to win this 2 1. Um, I, I think that there was enough there that showed me that Maurice de Sachs has the potential to take a game from uh, Mustafa Kamal, and I really hope that they do. Um, but, it, like, you know, that 
the the Lithuanians Tradash, like it, it wasn't brilliantly executed, but it was fine. It, what I liked about it is, is it showed ambition. Like lots of the round one games where people just sort of sat armies at home and kind of waited to have a mass. Maurice de Sachs was really, really active uh, in the early stages. And I think that um, Mustafa Kamal was a little bit tilted by that. So I hope to see a two on victory for Mustafa Kamal. I think that's, yeah, that's yeah. I think that's how I'd lean at the minute. I mean, I would say actually, to me, a fairly balanced game. And I know the end result didn't really reflect that. But I think what we saw there was two very, very different bets. One with a kind of boom and one with a, a kind of all-in feudal. And it's going to be really interesting to see what they pick in the next game. You know, are they both going to try and boom? How are they going to react? Is Maurice de Sachs going to decide that instant aggression wasn't the, the right choice? I mean, well, I'm looking at the replay for game number two right now, Guy, and I do not think that you're going to be disappointed when you see the map oh, please, or when on, you see the sieves. I'm just uh, loading up my screen at the minute, although it seems to have crashed. Give me well, a moment. I may have well, to restart chat. Age of Empires. Oh no, we are here. Round I can two, reveal that game number Kamal. two will be on Socotra and Maurice de Saxe is playing Goths. Huge, huge. And what do we have? What's he against here? He's up against the um, Vietnamese of Mustafa Kamal. Again, a decent sieve for Socotra because you see the town centre of the opponent. Um... Uh, but the goth laming bonus, um, I think, may come in clutch here. Right. Well, Maurice Sachs, we shall have to see. Indeed. Are you ready to go? Are we ready I am to ready go? to go. I'm paused at three seconds. All right. In which case, three, two, one, let's go. Go. We've got instant loom in from Maurice Sachs. I think that's a statement of intent right now. <laughs> it's definitely a statement. <laughs> that is going forward. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, and no, he's going forward. <laughs> in, interestingly, no loom from uh, from uh, Mustafa Kamal. We've got an immediate scout and villager fight. You know what? Yeah, I think so that's the thing about Viet Vietnamese means that blue must have hey, predicted sure. this and blue has either come forward yeah. too lame or come forward to scout a vil yeah. coming forward i think the blue might have come forward to lame but i don't think the blue should lame now um obviously he's got red scout he's, on him and he's got no loom either we've got an immediate oh no, no sorry come forward to lame with the scout i thought yeah oh, there's a blue villager coming out to fight the red villager without loom <laughs> yeah and we've got i mean let's see what we've got on the fog of war here we've got an idle villager here. Uh, we got Maurice de Sachs going straight for his elephant. So presumably yeah. trying to see what, off. What Blue should have done when they saw the villager coming forward is take the elephant early. Because um, there's only one. And what Maurice de Sachs is going to do now, yeah, he's going to wall himself in and he's going to shoot the elephant down. So if, for those of you that haven't seen this strategy before, because Goths kill boars and deer faster, this is a really good strategy on like small open maps where you go forward and you just shoot your opponent's hunt. There and at that go. point, your opponent can't take the hunt. So that hunt is now useless to them. We've uh, got another vil fight. We've still got no loom from from blue and we've got oh, he's gonna does lose the scout go he's down? Uh, no I don't think he does scout. Ooh, no he's not he's not yeah well this is an absolute disaster from for Mustafa Kamal the elephant is miles away from the town center the scout's low health uh, the villagers have been idle he's finally getting loom in but again we've seen this you know um, a two vil advantage because Maurice de Sachs clearly you know he's got this very good yeah. micro up front but he's not dealing effectively yeah. with this um with you know with minding his base so we've now got three bills queued up but probably maybe 20 30 seconds of idle time He's yeah yeah the, the, now um the, the, this is a player who has come into this set and has decided to be as yolo as they can oh my god oh my we're god. seeing a bill rush six bills coming forward <laughs> oh god he's, he's seen he must have seen the elephant taking food uh, oh sorry the food being taken from the elephant he's come to either take it himself or to start a fight and he's this laming in the back he's taking out all of the hunt as well this is absolutely amazing i i wonder if this is someone maybe like zach zach frenet mm, that's a good like, shout 
He like he's all about the interesting strategies. He's not been playing maybe as much as he'd have liked to. Maybe he decided to bring the party to this set. Kamal and, says, you know, I hate this. And um you know, Maurice de Saxe is getting a second elephant's worth of food. Hey, he's so. killed all the hunts at the back, he's walling up gold now. Oh, I am so here for this. Um yeah, Marisa Stacks, I mean, clearly not the best macro orientated player in the world, but boy, does he know how to piss people off. <laughs> I've got to say, a man after my own heart, I am thoroughly enjoying this. And, uh, and I, yeah, he says, my eco, though, so I think he's aware of this as well. I, I feel you, Maurice. I feel you. <laughs> okay, we've got um, Mustafa Kamal has said, okay, I've had enough of this. Uh, we've got one player housed. Both players housed at the minute. It's the chaos the culture gives you. Mustafa Kamal said, I've had enough of this. I'm keeping my berries at the very least. I'm going to wall around them. He's come to the hunt to find it's all dead. I think that, yeah, so Marisa Sax has had the same idea. And Marisa Sax is now heading forward to land <laughs> the berries. He's going to be disappointed when he gets there. But, you know, there are some secondary golds and stones that he could do. Like, he could uh, still access sure it's some of these berries at the front, can't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a forward mill that he built. <laughs> you think he was going <laughs> to mill the yeah. opponent's berries? Oh, no, he's going for it. He's going for it. Yeah. And then he's got three more coming forward yeah, to try and fight, um, try and take, uh, I was about to call him Zach, try and take uh, Mustafa Kamal off the hunt. And again, I quite like this because even if he can't fight them, he can, he's just idling his entire food eco. Yeah. And I mean, you can see this, you know, they have uh, Maurice de Sachs, 47 food, 109 food for um, for Mustafa Kamal, but you can see four villagers on the boil for Maurice de Sachs. Uh, Maurice de Sachs has the village. He um, has the village, yeah. and he's taking Kamal's berries as well. Yeah. Um, he's shouting, get out. Do we know any players who normally shout, get out? Um, we've got the barracks. Most players out. aren't normally placed in this position. Maurice starts going for a barracks despite the fact that he's housed. I would really love to see him build a house right. before I'm he finishes. I'm seeing houses the at the back. I'm seeing houses at the back. Oh, yes. Yeah, there we go. That's very, um, as Derek will say, rush him up straight away. Um, yeah. Well, no, I'm, really just, I'm just wondering. I noticed um, I was watching the chat a bit in the last game, and there were a lot yeah, of banter. And Kamala. Kam Kamala? Kamal. Yeah, Kamala Harris um, lying about how they were in trouble, um, but we also had them shout "Get out!" at one point, and we uh, yeah. we saw Maurice de Sack shout "Let me in." So I don't know if it's just um, just a back and forth that these two players are kind of having. I get the impression they're enjoying themselves. Um, and we, and we are that. getting militia from Maurice de Sachs. Now, I wonder if Maurice de Sachs oh. knows that because of the goth discount, he can make three militia. It looks like he does know that. That's really good. Um, and I'm seeing Normally, as well. you can only make two after Loom, but the goths can make three because of that discount. Maurice de Sachs says, thank you for berries. Very polite, this game at least. Um, and I mean, look, we're looking here. Maurice de Sachs still has... 450s worth of food. This has hunts. been an absolute oh. masterclass from Red. I mean, look at the food that Blue has available. All his deer are gone. He doesn't have access to his berries. Well, he has access to half of his berries. All on wood, because he needs he needs to make farms. It's absolutely crazy. And the militia are going to find the villas at the wood line. And I think at the point when they do, there might be a cheat sheet just purely out of frustration. Yeah, I would. Uh, and we've look, Maurice de Sachs is coming around here to try and lame the Berry villagers on the other side as well. I mean, he is clearly just enjoying this. Um, I like this little back base we've got going on here. I think if you're, you know, if you're playing Goths, you're Vietnamese, which I think is a, a bit of a strange choice for Socotra. But you've got to be aware that, you know, really your your best window is in. Kind of the wall into the TC field. is exactly the right yeah. thing to do. Um, they really need to repair this palisade. If they don't repair this palisade, it's bad times. Ah, there. They're building one behind. Yeah. So yeah, these these militia aren't going to do anything. But Maurice is actually on the way to Field Age, which is going to mean probably men at arms. Uh, yeah, he's gone to gold. Uh, or archers. And, um, and yeah. Maurice Sachs has let me in again. Let I'm expecting in. a get out from Kamal shortly. <laughs> and look, Maurice de Sachs is now on both sides of Kamal's berries, building a mill on his own berries. That's, uh, that's unbelievable. I, I, and, oh. you know, like, this is a masterclass of how to 
uh, lame on Socotra. Um, I mean, you've, I, you've... I tend to ban Socotra when it's in the 1v1 map pool because I play people and they do this to me. Um, <laughs> I mean, for a while the uh, the yeah. Inca Vil rush was meta on this, so I'm uh, I'm surprised you used to ban Sokotra. Um But yeah, I mean, I think this is the right play as well, though, that I'm seeing from um, from Kamal, right? Which is he's got 200 odd food, enough for fletching, a lot on wood. Now I want to see as many to gold as possible because you've got to be thinking as Mustafa Kamal. The time that I guy, win... guy, he he's not advanced to the feudal age yet. Oh yeah, that's bad. Yeah, <laughs> fine. fine, my bad. I was, but I was going to say. I mean, I think it's true, right? You have a window if you're an archer civ against the goths, and that window is early feudal. Right? I think he has to go FC. Whether that's FC into crossbows or FC into elephants, I don't know. But I think he just needs a really long dark age, and then basically instantly up to castle once it's feudal. Yeah, we got two barracks up. Uh, we got the men in arms trying to come out. We've got hey, these villagers yeah, keeping on the wood line. I mean, I don't hate it, but he's using a lot of wood oh. here just to to keep just the to men repair. at arms out yeah. and to repair. It's tough, yeah. And I would love to see uh, Red make some towers Ooh. on that yeah, gold. I mean, it's right there. That. You can see it. Or even on the wood line, right? Just push as many of these vills off the wood line as possible. Because yeah. the only way that they can flee is straight into the men at arms. Because he'll see that blue is still in Dark Age, so blue can't counter tower. Soon as yeah. red towers that gold, blue has no gold. Soon as red towers that wood, blue has no wood. I mean, neither of them is producing anything at the minute. And I think Maurice de Sachs realised his TC was idle again. I mean, it's it's quite hilarious. You um, you obviously see yeah. a huge military advantage, but Kamal actually has the villa advantage here. Yeah, but I mean, oh. Red's TC's been idle because he's actually been able to go to feudal. <laughs> Yeah, which obviously is three three yeah. villages worth of time. Okay, and he's off he's off the gold now. Now if you're I mean I agree with you, a tower would be preferable, but if you are Maurice de Sachs right now, you are saying you know what, I just need to keep him off gold. Camp that gold, yeah. Then Camp the only gold. thing that he's gonna be having is what, scouts. I can produce a few spears, and unless he's getting up to castle, it's uh um, Oh that villager is on a suicide mission. <laughs> yes, that's right, you get back. <laughs> Oh, I think, is he trying to wall? He's trying to I wall the men at arms them. out. Yeah, oh. he is. no, he's trying to wall them into this little enclosed area oh, by I the mining camp. I love camp. it. I'm oh no, he's given. Oh dear, no, no. Oh, this is a disaster. But actually, I mean, <laughs> again, though, if you're Maurice de Sachs and you're seeing this, you go, you know what? I'll take down that mining camp. You this can't... is all idle time. It's all unnecessary wood expenditure. It's all damage, and he's gonna get through this house. I think those but... men's arms will kill faster than the villager builds. But also, oh, no. yeah. We've got absolutely no gold for um, Mustafa Kamala. And, or Mustafa Kamal, sorry. We got an archery range yeah. back. I like that. Very hard for Maurice de Sachs to scout. But if you're, Maurice de Sachs, if you're Maurice de Sachs, you're looking at this and you're going, I keep him off gold. The best he can produce is what? Some skirmishers? Some scouts? Yeah, we're going to get four archers coming out, which is from the gold that they did manage to collect. But, oh, so many men at top. Uh, and that's, that's I don't the... think I can keep a straight face long enough on this cast guy. Have you decided just to cast your own game for the past? I have not, but that would be hilarious. I mean, I mean, I actually think this is the uh, the least giveaway uh, you know, stream for that. I think, you know, if we were on Four Lakes, Bulgarian men at arms or something. But, I mean, this is the meta, right? For Sokotra. Yeah, is it? I mean, what, what would your meta for Sokotra be? Not this. <laughs> so, so, like, I'm, I'm genuinely quite curious. Like, my understanding of the meta for Sokotra is that the Goths are the best people for it. We've got a market coming out. That's smart. Goths are the best yeah. Civ for Socotra alongside Celts, maybe? So, okay, I'll tell you what, I, I might have drushed, I might have yeah. made Men at Arms, but I would have transitioned to, to Archers and transitioned to Towers yeah. and forward range. I'd have stopped at maybe five Men at Arms, but most likely three. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I mean, this though, is too many. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at this, though, and I'm thinking he's got tunnel vision, right? He's just been trying to break in at the top. Been trying to he's, break built, he's built, no kidding, a castle age of men at arms. <laughs> there is no need to build a castle yeah, age of men at arms. Oh, for yeah. obvious reasons. Well, you know the login of. Uh, oh, and the tower's finally coming out, Richard. 
tower is finally coming out. Yeah, and, and at the time where I think he's seen Blue's counter tower, and that's why he's decided to tower. Because <laughs> so he, knows, just, just... he knows that Blue won't have stone for another one. So he's being like, ha ha. I, <laughs> I think you're putting far too much thought into this. This feels like a you know, Frenet brother has drunk slightly too much. He sees tower, and he remembers that towers are things you can construct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, look at Blee's military. Like he's got four scouts. He's got loads of so archers. He's, he's bought I some think stones if you're Blue, right? Tower. Blue is absolutely bricking it, understandably. But what he needs to do with these scouts is send them forward. I think he's going to do it now. He needs to realise that Red yeah. will be absolutely exposed at home. Yeah, he's he's yeah, realised yeah, what he no, needs to do. Good. And he's going to do good. it now. This is a very all-in move, but I I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Um. Don't even think Maurice and Maurice de Sachs so obsessed over at the top yet, not noticing at all. This is a brilliant game. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, yeah, we got look. we got some elevens in the chat. They're clearly both enjoying themselves here. Uh Maurice de Sachs is in, so we're about to see a similar amount of villagers die on the other side, uh, I imagine. Mustafa Kamar just lost quite a bit to the town centre, but his scout's still alive. They should find the wood line. They'll yeah, probably they get should. three or four vil kills there. Uh, and Marisa Sachs has just decided to, to take the fight. Um, we've got another tower coming up to threaten this second wood line. We've got an absolute brawl here. But getting through to that tower seems to have been pivotal. Marisa Sachs now with a 5 vil lead. Building one spearman. And you know, no gold, but almost... No, I was, I was looking at the wood counter. No, I was about to say maybe enough wo uh, food for Kamal to go up, but I was wrong. Um, and um, we've got the GG called. Well, two very entertaining games, Richard. What's your verdict there? We'll check out the stats. Like, yeah, I mean, we've seen two very all-in strategies from Maurice de Sachs. I think it's someone trying very hard to play as you do um with some success um but i think ultimately kamal will win game number three mm. he seems like the the better player um and by that i mean maybe just more basic things like um villager production yeah. understanding of which units counter which units that sort of thing yeah, I'm looking at this. I mean, if it is Sean McGarry, as somebody mentioned, then um, this is potentially the only time you'll ever see a villager higher 40, um, which is quite entertaining. Um, actual units killed 14 apiece, but I think you're right. It was the, the laming and the early aggression which really made that difference. The the lack of food and the consequent yeah. late feudal age, um, I think, was what it was. All right, let's see what chat say. Um We've got um, instant Saladin movement. would have won by now. Completely agree. Saladin would have won by Rui now. He says, I love this. Uh, Derek says, both these players clearly understand Scotra met uh, meta. <laughs> we have a lot of entertainment here. I hate this. Luke confirmed. Walling up gold is guy confirmed. Knows how to piss people off is guy confirmed. Chat seems to think it's me, Hops, uh, which will be interesting. Um, yeah. We've got... Uh, <laughs> guy confirmed, guy confirmed, guy confirmed. Saladin would have won by now. Um, Sean seems very animated about this. He's obviously one of our prime candidates for Kamal. And uh, Friendly Sword has joined the chat. Hello, Friendly Sword. Yeah, Gibby, you missed a Lithuanian Drush in the first game, and then you missed endless Men at Arms in the second game, with an endless laming as well. Well, uh, right. I'm just going to grab a very brief glass of water, and then we'll go into predictions for Game Three. Hops. Oh, yeah, the, well, the first, the first decider game of the tournament. I am very hyped for that. Now, so, yeah, I'm... now, chat. Are you enjoying um, the the um, the screensaver? Just want to check. Uh, this is a custom creation. I mean, Saladin had good micro. But 
yeah, I'll grab a drink to you guy and um, yeah, we'll hop into game three afterwards. Hello, I'm back. Hops, are you back? Hops, are you there? Hops. All right, I'm back. I'm going to load up game three and then yep, I will doing switch. The same. Uh, if you just want to pause it at the start. Yep. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to um, to game three of Maurice de Sachs versus Mustafa Kamal. Uh, Richard, are you ready to go? Yeah, give me a countdown. Three, two, one. Let's go. Okay. We have um, Turks for Mustafa Kamal. Uh, we have Persians for Maurice de Sachs. Yeah, and we so have for all Arabia the people. As the map. So for all the people who thought that uh, Maurice de Sachs might be Luke, um, I, I think suspicions possibly confirmed with the Persians. Pick. Oh no, people were saying Mustafa Kamal was Luke, weren't they? People yeah, say Maurice de, Sa Maurice de Sachs says, are you ready? Oh, oh guys, 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 guys. Are we going to get it? Are we going to get, get, get the douche? Are we going to get the douche? I think I think we will be getting the douche. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's, that seems oh, like got some technical issues. So that may have been what the "Are you ready?" was for. Mm. I don't know. Um... So for the douche, I'm not particularly familiar oh, with the shit, build. Oh shit! But... I'm sorry. I had not switched the screen. My bad, guys. Here you go. Well, look, guys, you haven't missed much. You've seen some basic chat, which was uh, Maurice de Sachs saying that, are you ready? And you've seen some sheep being collected. Very, very sorry. So, so sorry, Richard, you were saying, for the douche. Yeah, sorry. What time are you up to? I paused when I realized the screen had shifted, so I'm at 1.57 now. I'm at 2.30. All right, do you want to hold on for a second? Let yeah, me catch up. 2.38. All right, cool. I'll catch up to that. Okay, I'll count you in. Yep. Three, two, go. Yep. We're there. So you were saying for the douche build, which you think we might be seeing. Yeah, so for the douche build, I'm not massively familiar with it, but I think I understand that you need to send quite a lot to wood. Do you need like six six or seven on wood? Um, and then do you go drop the TC at what, 20 bills? Um, so I don't actually know what the, the kind of normal strategy to do it on a 1v1 would be, because uh, I've only ever done it as a kind of slightly troll strat on a team game. But I mean, you need minimum, what, 300 wood because you essentially yeah. want the capacity to build another house plus a town center yeah so you need a lot on wood but at the same time you want to stockpile food obviously you have some tc idle time but you need what at least 10 villagers to come Salon. forward and, you and also you want to be douching before your opponent has clicked feudal or like while they're on the way up right otherwise it can be denied so what you want to be sending tells 10 vils forward when you've got about 18 19 20. Yeah. Uh, Maurice de Sachs says alas mine villagers spawn too far away I'm assuming that's is that what the AI says when it resigns yeah yeah, yeah it is yeah it's these... I gotta oh say... my god have you seen what uh, oh, Mustafa Kamal is doing? So the mind, the mind games, clearly working. But Mustafa Kamal doesn't know where Maurice Sachs is, so he started with his uh, palisade balls in the wrong place. Uh, really, he should be guarding the the front of his base yeah. with respect to where Maurice Sachs is. I mean, this is this is good though, because you know you can actually tell here Kamal, an experienced player, because he's placing them at this kind of radius, whereas certainly when I think I'm going to get douched, I always have a bit of a panic and I just place them willy-nilly. The yeah. problem with that is you just spend a lot of time, whereas actually if they want to build the TC in this space or this space or this space, 
that's fine because you can shoot the villagers down. So there's basically like a an area where you can douche and you can douche effectively. And that's what he's walling off, which I think is a very good move. The other that thing I just know becoming note, quite limited. Yeah, the other thing I just note here is um Maurice de Sachs again, like he's one villager behind. I think oh he God. he doesn't have loom, so he doesn't even have that excuse. Probably the other villagers. thing that I've noticed is that Maurice de Sachs is not douching. He's not. He's no, got three. Right. three on he's wood. got three on wood. So it's a scout, it's a scout build. build. Yeah. It's a scout build and some uh, slight distractions. Nah, is Blue gonna lose his scout? No, no. Yeah, you've you've got to look at this, and I mean, yeah. You know, you could look at game, you know, game one, and I think you could say Maurice de Sachs made a pretty bad error in the transition, but he had a good stab at it. You can look at game two and say that was um, it was a good old Sakultra shit show. But you're looking at game three and a two villager difference. Yeah, that's the difference here between the scouts coming up before walls. That's the difference Body. between. Um, you know, getting up a minute or two early. Like, it just feels like an unforgivable flaw, really, for Maurice de Sachs here. I, I can't help but think that Red is Zach Frenet, because Zach Frenet predicted a 2-1 win for Maurice de Sachs here. And I think that Maurice de Sachs has played an absolute blinder because he's proper mind-gamed Mustafa Kamal into all of this idle time around his TC building these palisades and houses. And Mustafa Kamal is significantly behind Feudal Age, with significantly more idle vills and significantly less resources. But with more vills in aggregate, which is again what we what we saw in game one, right? I think, you know, in terms of the game plan, the execution is, you know, the game plan from Reese Attacks has been there, I think, but the execution has been lacking so far. Yeah, the transition of villagers to wood is quite problematic here. Um, but he has got up with enough wood to build a stable, somewhat Kills. more by luck than by judgment, because he hasn't yeah. had many villagers on wood. But he's going to be able to get scouts out. He's got population room to do so, and this could be quite a dangerous rush. You can see the scout, yeah, attacking the villager to try and stop them from walling up. And yeah, I mean, Mustafa Kamal, he's got a lot to wall here, and the scouts are going to be here quite soon. Yeah. So, Maurice Sachs' economy. Oh my days. Look at all the villagers on that straggler tree. <laughs> so, I mean, you've, and you've got this problem here, right? Like. I think Maurice de Sachs very kind of micro focused here, but just not thinking about the aggregate at all. Really poor transition. But you know what? If he gets these scouts in, is he gonna get in? Yeah, he's gonna oh, annoy this no, villager oh, here. Oh, 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 you've got to feel. You might for the guy take here. down the no, no. You got to uh, feel for the guy here because again, that is a. There's been so many of them in this series, actually, or at least in the first two games, kind of deciding moments, right? Villager gets Spear in. out as well. Yeah, but let, let's say the villager doesn't get that quick wall. You probably have another two vills dying. Um, I don't know. The scout that was going in was weak. Um, so the villager probably could have fought it off. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess... The... After you, sorry, after you. The big thing here for Maurice de Sachs is to decide what to do with the fact that Mustafa Kamal has walled up. So there are, there are three options, as I see it. So... Option number one, stop building scouts, get to Castle Age as quickly as you can. Yeah. Option number two, build a forward range. Option number three, build forward towers. And he has to decide now if he's going to do option two or option three. Mm -hmm. If he waits, then Mustafa Kamal will beat him to Castle Age, not take any damage and win the game. Forward towers feels, it feels like the resources are too distributed here. I'm not seeing any more scouts. Yeah, so I think he's I going think for option one. Um, yeah. And I'm looking at this, and these, these economies are both pretty equal right now. Um, we have in chat, uh, who has culture and meta down perfect, but still makes mistakes in the Dark Age. Are we? Um, and again, you, you see these scouts here, they arrive 10, 15 seconds too late for this last bit of the wall to be completed. Yeah. That's the difference. 
They are going to force some idle time and wood spend, though. Um, yeah, but I mean, you've got they hit these walls. 240s worth of food. So Maurice de Sachs could be in the driving seat here um, with that kind of early game eco lead. But instead, we're, we're tied neck and neck on resource. Uh, similar upgrades, though. Uh, I'm not sure Maurice de Sachs has horse collar. Let's tell by looking at some of these. No, I don't think so. Um, and yeah, you've got to feel it's a race to castle now, and then it's seeing what the players do with it. I mean, if you're if you're Kamal, what's your game plan here? Turks? Oh, my dear. Honestly, if I were Kamal, I would have built some scouts. Turk scouts are better than Persian scouts. Your walled, they're not. They also um, have the upgrade. And so, yeah, yeah um, I think that I think that Kamal was forced into a defensive mindset here and didn't necessarily need defense. to be. But I mean, this this is also fine. Like he's walled out the scouts. He may be thinking he'll have a faster castle age time. Oh no, he's getting fletching now and making a range. I'm, I don't like this because no. uh, um, he's not on gold. We got Maurice de Sachs here again. Um, he's racing towards the amount of food for Castle, and I think he will be clicking up soon. Oh, we've got double. He can't decide which gold to go to. He has ultimately gone to the main one, which I, th I think is the right decision. And if you're Maurice um, de Sachs, what do you do here? You're going to be up to Castle slightly earlier, it looks. Oh yeah, oh he's going to be up much earlier. Well, yeah, so Blue, I think, yeah, he's got options here. I think, has he seen that Blue went to the forward gold? I don't think he has. That is, no. that is unfortunate. I think if he had seen that Blue had gone to the forward gold, he would have gone range and crossbows. As it is, I think, oh no, that is what he's doing. Um, I think if I oh, hadn't seen range, that, I would go forging. Oh, so, so you'll be going double down on cavalry. Pers Persian yeah. cavalry, of course. I mean, has he scouted this archery? I think he's scouted this archery range. And Persian okay. cavalry, of course, plus two against foot archers. Yeah. So why why the range in that case? I I think this is a little bit of indecision. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, he says double walls. Sad. I do really yeah. like to see this though. Both oh, players no, clearly enjoying themselves. Yeah, definitely. I really actually like I like the eco balance here from Maurice de Sachs. Um for, for knights, he's got seven on gold, uh, he's got a decent amount on, on, on food. But equally he's got the economy that can do archers as well, like fourteen bills on wood. I think that what we'll probably see is we'll see early second town centre, probably over towards the right hand side of his base on those two golds here and that wood line. So he's up. Let's oh, see no, he's he going on the stone. On the yeah, stone. Fair enough. Okay, yeah. Just well, I mean, not a million around. miles away, giving some cover there as well. Uh, we see... And he's getting scale barding armor, so yeah, it is going to be knights. It's going to be knights. Um, and, you know, I don't hate that as a move. I don't know if you can see the second. You can see one archery range. So the mind games works. It's very amusing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We see the second. We see the archery range. So he's probably thinking here. You know what? Foot archers in round one. I'm expecting. Oh, we've got a third town centre coming out. So he's decided to boot. He has. Yeah. It's a really interesting town centre. I. You know what? I don't hate it. I... And again, we've got um, some slight lies here from uh, from Blue. The mind games. You said that was indicative of uh, William Gibson. Yeah, I I did. I did. And it is just like Gibby to overreact to this sort of thing, honestly. Um I I mean this yeah, you, could this you are could in be... castle, castle at ninety five percent. It's the same same joke as last time. <laughs> yeah, for now, and here we go, straight into castle age. <laughs> oh my god, are the villagers gonna let them in? <laughs> if it weren't for the spears. But that gate is super vulnerable, and I think that Maurice de Sachs needs to realise that and send Wor his knights there. Worth worth noting as well, you know, unlike um, other civs, Turks only access to spears. 
Yes. Oh, that's a big deal. I can't... Do they get camel? They get camel, they right? Do, they do get camel. But I mean, no, no. here, the thing that's holding and they Marista are going Sachs into camels. Here, yeah. Marista Sachs went three TCs, but he's only got enough military... Uh, one military production building. And so he could have had knights out two, three minutes ago. And it's going to be camels and cav archers from Mustafa Kamal, who I think is going to stay on one town centre. Yeah. And this could become quite a dangerous composition and one that is quite difficult for Maurice de Sachs to deal with. This feels, the thing um... about the way that uh, Maurice de Sachs has built his second and third TCs is he's lost control of his secondary golds and also lost control of the central hill in front of his base. See, this is why I kind of wanted the second town centre to be further out to the right, sort of expanding towards your enemy, yeah. which seems counterintuitive, but that hill here is going to be super important. Um, and the lack of ability to mobilize units to near there is going to be a problem. So we see you can see a forward villager from blue, yeah. who's built a forward siege, siege workshop siege right there, outside those two secondary golds. Yeah. You, got to, you got to feel, um, I mean, Maurice de Saxe here has played two very aggressive round ones, and he's probably, yeah, he's probably not quite worked for him. I think it's fair to say, you know, one round has paid off, but it was a very, very all-you-can-in all-in appro all approach. And he seems to have now said, you know what, I can sit back, I can compete. And if you look at the, the village of production, we've got kind of a, a 10 lead from Maurice de Sachs. And he's thinking, if I can just boom away, they won't have expected it. Um, and I'll kind of try and win this late game. But, I mean, Cav how do you react to this, to Cav Archers? As, uh, I, as think the, I think building his own camels is a good start. I, yeah. I see that should work fine while the cav archers are in small numbers. Um, when the cav archers get into a larger mass, you need to switch to skirm. That's not yet the case. Some camels and some knights with good armor will be able to We've clean this up. Four, forward siege and a forward monastery. This so, is very Gibby. Yeah, see, <laughs> I was going to say, there are very few players in this tournament who I would expect to go for a siege monk push, supported yeah. by cavalry archers. I think the and interesting thing here, Richard, just um, is I'm looking at the stone here. Maurice de Sachs, 400 stone. If there's one thing that would stop this composition dead in its tracks, it's a good defensive castle. Yeah. Um, and that feels kind of... feels like it could be deciding to me. If Maurice de Sachs gets his eco secure in a position with a 50 vil lead, you know, he can presumably just play defensive, Boom away, yeah, and we've got. But he's defending such a small area of the map. Like oh, he'll be out of wood out. very soon. So that yeah. castle is going up, and it will defend his farm space just fine. But he has one wood line. Yeah. Um. So well, I, I think blue will always be able to find map, places to hit here. Yes. Um. And hope you don't get spotted. Yeah. I think that was that's what he's going to have to do. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. Blue's going to see the castle now, yeah. and he's going to be like, ah, damn it. Be interesting to see how Blue reacts now. I think that he needs to just change the angle of attack. So yeah, that's what he's doing. He's bringing his cav archers around the front. He'll hit the production buildings. He'll hit that forward TC. Yeah, this is really good play. Like so many players would just run home here. Yeah. Um, but Blue knows exactly what to do. Keep the momentum up. Yeah. Mine their gold. Just continue to be annoying. Um, Mr. Zach's clearly wanting to go for some kind of aggression out here. He's sending some troops. I mean, if you're him, you're looking at the score, which I think is mainly some kills. And you're going to be a bit daunted, aren't you? You know, you don't know that Kamal, whether Kamal is booming away behind this or... I think you've got to assume that um, Kamal is all in. Yeah. You don't see two mangonels, a monk, and a big ball of cav archers without there being at least 15 villagers on gold, right? And as you can see, 22 on gold it is for... Uh, um, we've got, we've got a second castle coming up. Got one TC bonks down. And you know what, guy? I hate this castle. Hate what this does castle. it defend? Well, yeah, I think you, you want it on this hill if it's going anywhere, Whoa. don't you? I mean, I guess the the only point you're looking at yeah. here is does this just depend defend the other flank of the farm space? Yeah. We've got some yeah, guys going out to, to do some cockroaching here. 
And the Ville lead 22, so decreasing. The Camel's trying to get in, but Kamal's just walling away. Still on 1 TC. Yeah, I, I think the Blue is a very accomplished player. Um, I think it could easily be Will Gibson. And what do you fancy right now for the score of this match? As I think stand? that Kamal has this game. You think Kamal has uh, this game? Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is, this is a lot of pressure. I think he could be doing a bit more with his cavalry archers, but he is going to try and hunt down the camels, which I think is, is something. The one risk that he runs by doing this, though, is he has left his mangonels exposed Whoa. outside a stable. Um, yeah. But I, I, I think it will be probably fine. Yeah, yeah these think, camels now are going to expose themselves to the right. cav archers and get trapped. Castle, what you really wanted was the castle maybe between these two wood lines here. But yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... Because he's built that castle which could have defended Wood Income, but instead he's just had to run to the other side of the map. Yeah. Um, I think I'm. I mean, you've got the trouble here that the Cav Archers are massing and not enough armor on the camels. I'm looking at yeah. Maurice de Saxe's food. I think, again, as you say, just a little bit of panic, not getting the upgrades that are needed. But spamming out villagers, presumably, again, he's committed to the same thing, right? He's just, I've got to be away. He's trying to boom himself out of trouble. Yeah. Which, again, for the people that thought that Maurice de Saxe was a possible Sean or a possible Luke... Um, I don't think, you know, was Sean ever discussed for Maurice de Saxe? I think Luke maybe was in the first Whoa. set. Um, but, yeah, no, probably not. No, Sean was Kamal, wasn't he? Right, we've got and two yeah. more TCs up here. We've got Imp from Imp and free chemistry as you can yeah. see from the fire of these mangonels yeah, the which is cool. is cool and then yeah wow what a set what and a set, really yeah. well played by mustafa kamal um to not get tilted by the uh sort of the faint the douche faint i guess we would call it and to you know develop a strategy which you know showed how good he was at yolo aggression um, you know, that was a YOLO aggression build that was just as good That's as it. anything that Maurice Sachs put together and uh, a deserved win for, yeah. I think, Mustafa Kamal in Game 3. I must say, though, this um, that build very much narrows it down for me as to the potential players. I, I think it's I think it's Will. Um, yeah, I think like the, 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 the Siege Monk push is something that I know that he's played a lot in the past um, and he executed that really nicely. Um with the sneak veil. Um, Will yeah, plays quite a exactly lot of Ethiopians as well, doesn't he? Game one. Yeah, the Ethiopians pick game one is, yeah, yeah. pretty gibby. I'm pretty set on that. Maurice yeah, de really. Sachs, I mean, I don't know. The the first two games were, they, they played honestly like it was, like it was you with the lift rush and yeah, the end I think that's very, very fair. Indeed. But I, mean, I don't think, I don't think it's you. I mean, uh, I would also say, um, I think Siege Monk is a it's a build you really have to play in practice. Um, goth spam on Socotra, I think, is not. And I mean, the I wouldn't say I'm good with a lift rush, but I think it was very, very abundantly clear that um, Maurice de Saxe was struggling with the eco balance that a lift rush required. I'm gonna call this as Will as Mustafa Kamal. And uh, either Zach or Rue, I think I'm going to go for Zach Frenet as Maurice de Sachs. I think I think that's fair. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the round. Richard, thank you're you most, for that. You're most welcome. I absolutely love the round. I think it's been the best set of the tournament so far, so I was really pleased to be here and to cast it with you. Um, See everyone next time. See you all next time. Cheers. Bye.